Not marching now in fields of Thrasymene, where Mars did make the Carthaginians, nor sporting in the dalliance of love, in courts of kings where state is overturned, nor in the pomp of proud audacious deeds, intends our muse to vaunt her heavenly verse. Only this, gentlemen, we must perform the form of Forster's fortunes, good or bad. And now to patient judgments we appeal and speak for Faustus in his infancy. Now is he born, his parents' base of stock in Germany within a town called Rhodes. Of riper years to Wittenberg he went, whereas his kinsmen chiefly brought him up. So soon he profits in divinity the fruitful plot of scholarism graced that shortly he was graced with doctor's name, excelling all whose sweet delight disputes in heavenly matters of theology. Till, swoln with cunning, of a self-conceit, his waxen wings did mount above his reach, and melting, heaven conspired his overthrow. For falling to a devilish exercise, and glutted now with learning's golden gifts, he surfeits upon cursed necromancy. Nothing so sweet as magic is to him, which he prefers before his chiefest bliss. And this the man that in his study sits. Settle thy studies, Faustus, and begin to sound the depth of that thou wilt profess. Having commenced be a divine in show, yet level at the end of every art and live, and die in Aristotle's works. Sweet analytics, tis thou hast ravished me. Bene deserere est finis, logis says is to dispute well logic's chiefest end affords this art no greater miracle and be no more thou hast attained the end a greater subject fitteth Forster's wit bid on chimaeon farewell galen come seeing ubi designate philosophers ibi incipit medicus be a physician, Faustus. Heap up gold and be eternized for some wondrous cure. Summum bonum medicinae sanitas. The end of physic is our body's health. Why, Faustus? Hast thou not attained that end? Is not thy common talk sound aphorisms? And not thy bills hung up as monuments whereby whole cities have escaped the plague and thousand desperate maladies been eased? Yet art thou still but Forsters and a man. Couldst thou make men to live eternally or being dead raise them to life again, then this profession were to be esteemed. Physic. Farewell. Where is Justinian? Si una e adam que res legato duobus, ad rem, ad valorum, re, etc. A pretty case of paltry legacies. Ex hereditari filium non potest pater. Such is the subject of the institute and universal body of the law. This study fits a mercenary drudge who aims at nothing but external trash, too servile and illiberal for me. When all is done, divinity is best. Jerome's Bible, Faustus, view it well. Stipendium peccati mors est. Ah. Stipendium peccati mors est. The reward of sin is...
death. That's hard. Si picasse negamus falliamur et nulla est in nobis veritas. If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and there's no truth in us. Why then, we like, we must sin and so consequently die. Aye, we must die an everlasting death. What doctrine call you this? Que sara, sara, what will be, shall be. Divinity, adieu. These metaphysics of magicians and necromantic books are heavenly. Lines, circles, scenes, letters and characters, aye, these are those that Forster's most desires. Oh, what a world of profit and delight, of power, of honor, of omnipotence is promised to the studious artisan. All things that move between the quiet poles should be at my command. Emperors and kings are but a bed in their several provinces, nor can they raise the wind or rend the clouds. But his dominion that exceeds in this stretcheth as far as doth the mind of man. A sound magician is a mighty god. Here, Faustus, try thy brains to gain a deity. Wagner, commend me to my dearest friends, the German Valdes and Cornelius. Request them earnestly to visit me. I will, sir. Their conference will be a greater help to me than all my labors plot I ne'er so fast. Come. German valleys and Cornelius, and make me blessed with your sage conference. Valleys, sweet valleys and Cornelius, know that your words have won me at the last to practice magic and concealed arts. Yet not your words only, but mine own fantasy, that will receive no object for my head, but ruminates on necromantic skill. Philosophy is odious and obscure. Both law and physic are for petty wits. Divinity is basest of the three, unpleasant, harsh, contemptible, and vile. It is magic, magic that hath ravished me. Faustus, these books, thy wit and our experience, shall make all nations to canonize us. As Indian Moors obey their Spanish lords, so shall the subjects of every element be always serviceable to us. If learned Faustus will be resolute. Valdez, as resolute a mind this as thou to live, therefore object it not. The miracles that magic will perform will make thee vow to study nothing else. He that is grounded in astrology, enriched with tongues, well seen in minerals, hath all the principles magic doth require. Then doubt not, Faustus, but to be renowned, and more frequented for this mystery than heretofore the Delphian oracle. The spirits tell me they can dry the sea, and fetch the treasure of all foreign wrecks, I. All the wealth that our forefathers hid within the massy entrails of the earth. Then tell me, Faustus, what shall we three want? Nothing, Cornelius. Oh, this cheers my soul. Come, show me some demonstrations magical that I may conjure in some lusty grove and have these joys in full possession. Then haste thee to some solitary grove and bear wise bacons and Albertus works the Hebrew Psalter and New Testament, and whatsoever else is requisite, we will inform thee ere our conference cease. The Valdes, first let him know the words of art, and then all other ceremonies learned, Faustus may try his cunning by himself. <laughs> first, I'll instruct thee in the rudiments, and then wilt thou be perfecter than I. 
Then come and dine with me, and after meat we'll canvas every quiddity thereof. For ere I sleep, I'll try what I can do. This night I'll conjure, though I die, therefore. Now let the gloomy shadow of the earth, longing to view Orion's drizzling look, leaps from the Antarctic world unto the sky and dims the welkin with her pitchy breath. Faustus, begin thine incantations and try if devils will obey thy hiss, seeing thou hast prayed and sacrificed to them. Within this circle is Jehovah's name forward and backward anagrammatized. The abbreviated names of holy saints, figures of every adjunct to the heavens and characters of signs and erring stars by which the spirits are enforced to rise. Then fear not, Faustus, but be resolute. And try the uttermost magic can perform. Oh. Saint, me he, Dei, Acarontis Propiti. Valiat Numen Triplex Jehovai, Dei, Aeri, Aquatani, Spiritus, Salvete. Orientis Princeps Belzebub, Inferni Ardentis Monarca et Demagorgon, Propitiamus Vos. Who the pariot et surgat Mephistopheles? Qui tu moraris? Per Jehovam, Gehenam, et consecratam, aquam, quam, nunc spargo. Signumque crucis quod nunc fascio et per voda nostra, ipse nunc surgat nobis dicadus Mephistovile! I charge thee to return and change thy shape. Thou art too ugly to attend on me. Go and return an old Franciscan friar. That holy shape becomes a devil best. <laughs> I see this virtue in my heavenly words. Who would not be proficient in this art? How blind is this Mephistopheles, full of obedience and humility, such as the force of magic and... My spells. No, Faustus, thou art conjure a laureate that canst command great Mephistopheles. Queen Raid is Mephistopheles fratris imagine. Now, Faustus, what wouldst thou have me do? I charge thee. Wait upon me whilst I live to do whatever Faustus shall command. Be to make the moon drop from her sphere, or the ocean to overwhelm the world. I am a servant to great Lucifer, and may not follow thee without his leave. No more than he commands must we perform. Did not he charge thee to appear to me? No. I came hither of mine own accord. Did not my conjuring speeches raise thee? Speak. That was the cause, but yet per accidents. For when we hear one rack the name of God, abjure the scriptures, and his Savior Christ, we fly in hope to get his glorious soul. Nor will we come unless he use such means whereby he is in danger. 
to be damned. Therefore, the shortest cut for conjuring is stoutly to abjure the Trinity and pray devoutly to the Prince of Hell. So Faustus hath already done, and holds this principle. There is no chief, but only Beelzebub, to whom Faustus doth dedicate himself. This word damnation terrifies not him, for he confounds hell in Elysium. His ghost be worthy of old philosophers. But leaving these vain trifles of men's souls. Tell me, what is that, Lucifer, thy lord? Arch-regent and commander of all spirits. Was not that Lucifer an angel once? Yes, Faustus, and most dearly loved of God. How comes it then that he is prince of devils? Oh, by aspiring pride and insolence, for which God threw him from the face of heaven. And what are you that live with Lucifer? Unhappy spirits that fell with Lucifer conspired against our God with Lucifer and are forever damned with Lucifer. Where are you damned? In hell. How comes it then that thou art out of hell? Why, this is hell, nor am I out of it. Thinkst thou that I, who saw the face of God, and tasted the eternal joys of heaven, am not tormented with ten thousand hells in being deprived of everlasting bliss? Oh, Faustus, leave these frivolous demands which strike a terror to my fainting soul. What? Is great Mephistopheles so passionate at being deprived of the joys of heaven? Learn thou Faustus manly fortitude and scorn those joys thou never shalt possess. Go, bear these tidings to great Lucifer. Seeing Faustus hath incurred eternal death by desperate thoughts against Jove's deity, say he surrenders up to him his soul so he will spare him four and twenty years letting him live in all voluptuousness having thee ever to attend on me to give me whatsoever i shall ask to tell me whatsoever i demand to slay my enemies and aid my friends and always be obedient to my will go and return to mighty lucifer and meet me in my study at midnight and there resolve me of thy master's mind I will, Faustus. Had I as many souls as maybe stars, I'd give them all for Mephistopheles. By him, I be great emperor of the world and make a bridge thorough the moving air to pass the ocean with a band of men. I'll join the hills that bind the Afric shore and make that land continent to spain and both contributory to my crown the emperor shall not live but by my lead nor any potentate of germany now that i have obtained what i desire i live in speculation of this art till mephistopheles return again Come, Mephistopheles, and bring glad tidings from great Lucifer. It's not midnight. Come, Mephistopheles. Veni, veni, Mephistopheles. Now tell me, what says Lucifer, thy lord? That I shall wait on Faustus whilst he lives, so he will buy my service with his soul. Already Faustus hath hazarded that for thee. But Faustus? Thou must bequeath it solemnly, and write a deed of gift with thine own blood. For that security craves great Lucifer. If thou deny it, I will back to hell. Stay, Mephistopheles, and tell me, what good will my soul do thy lord? Enlarge his kingdom. Is that the reason that he tempts us thus? Sola mem miseris socios habuise dolores. 
Why, have you any pain that torture others? As great as have the human souls of men. But tell me, Faustus, shall I have thy soul? And I will be thy slave and wait on thee and give thee more than thou hast wit to ask. I, Mephistopheles, I give it thee. Then stab thy arm courageously and bind thy soul, that at some certain day great Lucifer may claim it as his own. And then be thou as great as Lucifer. <sighs> Lo, Mephistopheles, for love of thee, I cut to mine arm, and with my proper blood assure my soul to be great Lucifer's chief lord and regent of perpetual night. View here the blood that trickles from my arm, and let it be propitious for my wish. But, Faustus, thou must write it in manner of a deed of gift. Aye. So I will. But Mephistopheles, my blood congeals and I can write no more. I'll fetch thee fire to dissolve it straight. What might the staying of my blood portend? Is it unwilling I should write this bill? Why streams it not that I may write afresh Forster's gifts to thee his soul? Ah, there it stayed. Why shouldst thou not? Is not thy soul thine own? Then write again. Faustus gives to thee his soul. Here's fire. Come, Faustus, set it on. So now the blood begins to clear again. Now will I make an end immediately. Oh, what will I not do to obtain his soul? Consumatum est. This bill is ended, and Faustus hath bequeathed his soul to Lucifer. Oh, what is this inscription on my arm? Homo fuge. Whither should I fly? If under God he throw me down to hell. My senses are deceived. Here's nothing writ. I see it plain. Here in this place is writ. Homo fuge. Yet shall not Faustus fly. Here. Mephistopheles, receive this scroll, a deed of gift of body and of soul, but yet conditionally that thou perform all articles prescribed between us both. Faustus, I swear by hell and Lucifer to effect all promises between us made. Now, Faustus, ask what thou wilt. First will I question with thee about hell. Tell me, where is this place that men call hell? Under the heavens. Aye, but whereabouts? within the bowels of these elements, where we are tortured and remain forever. Hell hath no limits, nor is circumscribed in one self-place. For where we are is hell, and where hell is, there must we ever be. And to conclude, when all the world dissolves and every creature shall be purified, all places shall be hell. That are not him. Oh, come, I think hell's a fable. But, Faustus, I am an instance to prove the contrary, for I am damned and am now in hell. How? Now in hell? <laughs> Nay, and this be hell, I'd willingly be damned here. What, walking, disputing, etc.? But leaving off this, let me have a wife. Fairest maid in Germany, for I am wanton and lascivious and cannot live without a wife. How? Oh, a wife? I prithee, Faustus, talk not of a wife. Nay, sweet Mephistopheles, fetch me one, for I will have one. Well, thou will have one. 
I'll cull thee out the fairest courtesans, and bring them every morning to thy bed. Hold, take this book, peruse it thoroughly. The iterating of these lines brings gold. The framing of this circle on the ground brings whirlwinds, tempests, thunder and lightning. Pronounce this thrice devoutly to thyself, and men in armor shall appear to thee ready to execute what thou desirest. Thanks, Mephistopheles. Yet fain would I have a book wherein I might behold all spells and incantations that I might raise up spirits when I please. Here they are in this book. Now would I have a book where I might see all characters and planets of the heavens that I might know their motions and dispositions. Here they are too. Hey, let me have one book more and then I've done. Wherein I might see all plants, herbs and trees that grow upon the earth. Here they be. Oh, thou art deceived. Tut, I warrant thee. When I behold the heavens, then I repent and curse thee, wicked Mephistopheles, because thou hast deprived me of those joys. Why, Faustus, thinks thou that heaven is such a glorious thing? I tell thee, tis not half so fair as thou, nor any man that breathes on earth. How proofs are that? Twas made for man. Therefore, tis man more excellent. If to were made for man, twas made for me. I will renounce this magic and repent. Ah, Christ, my Savior, seek to save distressed Forster's soul. Christ cannot save thy soul, for he is just. There's none but I have interest in the same. Oh, who art thou that looks so terrible? I am Lucifer, and this is my companion prince in hell. Oh, Faustus, they come to fetch away thy soul. We come to tell thee thou dost injure us. Thou talkst of Christ contrary to thy promise. Thou shouldst not think of God. Think of the devil and of his dam, too. Nor will I henceforth pardon me in this, and force his vows never to look to heaven, never to name God or to pray to him, to burn his scriptures, slay his ministers, and make my spirits pull his churches down. Do so, and we will highly gratify thee. Faustus, we are come from hell to show thee some pastime. Sit down. And thou shalt see all the seven deadly sins appear in their proper shapes. That sight will be as pleasing unto me as paradise was to Adam the first day of his creation. Talk not of paradise nor creation, but mark this show. Talk of the devil and nothing else. Come away. Now, Faustus. Examine them of their several names and dispositions. What art thou, the first? I am pride. I disdain to have any parents. I am like to Ovid's flea. I can creep into every corner of a wench. Sometimes, like a periwig, I sit upon her brow. Or like a fan of feathers, I kiss her lips. Indeed I do. What do I not? But fie, what a scent is here. I'll not speak another word, except the ground were perfumed and covered with cloth of arras. Thou a proud knave indeed. What art thou, the second? I am covetousness, begotten of an old churl in an old leathern bag. And might I have my wish, I would desire that this house and all the people in it were turned to gold, that I might lock you up in my good chest. Oh, my sweet gold. What art thou, the third? I am wrath. I had neither father nor mother. I leaped out of a lion's mouth when I was scarce half an hour old. And ever since, I have run up and down the world with this case of rapiers, wounding myself when I had no one else to fight with all. 
I was born in hell. And look to it, for some of you shall be my father. What art thou, the fourth? I am envy, begotten of a chimney sweeper and an oyster wife. I cannot read and therefore wish all books were burnt. I am lean with seeing others eat. Oh, that there would come a famine through all the world, that all might die and I live alone. Then thou shouldn't see how fat I would be. But must thou sit and I stand? Come down with a vengeance. <laughs> Away, envious rascal. What art thou, the fifth? Ooh, I, sir. Uh, I am gluttony. My parents are all dead, and the devil a penny they left me, but a bare pension. <laughs> that is thirty meals a day and ten beavers. <laughs> a small trifle to suffice nature. Oh, I come of a royal parentage. My grandfather was a gammon of bacon. My grandmother a hogshead of claret wine. <laughs> My godfathers were these, Peter Pickle Herring and Martin Martelmas Beef. Oh, but my godmother, she was a jolly gentlewoman and well-beloved in every good town and city. Her name was Mistress Marjorie March Beer. Now, Faustus, thou hast heard all my progeny. Wilt thou bid me to supper? No, I'll see thee hanged. I would eat up all my victuals. Then the devil choke with thee. Choke thyself, glutton. What art thou, the sixth? I am slow. I was begotten on a sunny bank where I have lain ever since. And you have done me great injury to bring me from thence. Let me be carried thither again by gluttony and lechery. Oh, I'll not speak another word for a king's ransom. Oh. What are you, Mistress Minx, the seventh and last? Who? I, sir. I'm one that loves an inch of raw mutton better than an L of fried stockfish. And the first letter of my name begins with lechery. Away! To hell! To hell! <laughs> Now, <laughs> how dost thou love this? <laughs> <laughs> this is it, Tart, Faustus. In hell is all manner of delight. Oh, might I see Helen return again? How happy were I then? Thou shalt. I will send for thee at midnight. In meantime, take this book. Peruse it truly, and thou shalt turn thyself into what shape thou wilt. Great thanks. Mighty Lucifer, this will I keep as chary as my life. Farewell, Faustus. And think on the devil. Farewell, great Lucifer. Come, Mephistopheles. Now by the kingdoms of infernal rule, of Styx, Acheron, and the fiery lake of ever-burning Phlegathon, I swear that I do long to see the monuments and situations of bright splendid Rome. Come, therefore, that's a way. Nay, Faustus, stay. I know you'd fain see the Pope and take some part of holy Peter's feast, where thou shalt see a troop of bald-paid friars whose summum bonum is in belly cheer. <laughs> well, I'm content to come to them some sport, and by their folly make us merriment, and charm me that I may be invisible to do whate'er I please unseen by any. So, Faustus, do what thou wilt, thou shalt not be discerned. I 
I think my master means to die shortly. For he has given to me all his goods. And yet, methinks, if that death were near, he would not banquet and carouse and swill amongst the students as even now he doth. Who were at supper with such belly cheer as Wagner ne'er beheld in all his life. See where they come. Belike the feast is ended. Master Dr. Faustus. Since our conference about fair ladies, which was the beautifulest in all the world, we have determined with ourselves that Helen of Greece was the admirablest lady that ever lived. Therefore, Master Doctor, if you will do us that favor as to let us see that peerless dame of Greece, whom all the world admires for majesty, we should think ourselves much beholding unto you. Ah, gentlemen, for that I know your friendship is unfeigned and Forster's custom is not to deny the just requests of those that wish him well, you shall behold that peerless dame of Greece. No other ways for pomp and majesty is when Sir Paris crossed the seas with her and brought the spoils to rich Dardania. <laughs> Be silent then. Danger is in words. Too simple is my wit to tell her praise, whom all the world admires for majesty. No marvel, though the angry Greeks pursued, with ten years' war the rape of such a queen whose heavenly beauty passeth all compare. Now that we have seen the pride of nature's works, and only paragon of excellence, let us depart, and for this glorious deed, happy and blessed be Forsters evermore. Gentlemen, farewell. The same I wish to you. Cursed Faustus. Where is mercy now? I do repent, and yet I do despair. Hell strives with grace for conquest in my breast. What shall I do to shun the snares of death? Thou traitor, Faustus, I arrest thy soul for disobedience to my sovereign lord. Revolt? Or I'll in piecemeal tear thy flesh. Sweet Mephistopheles, entreat thy lord to pardon my unjust presumption, and with my blood again I will confirm my former vow I made to Lucifer. Do it then quickly, with unfeigned heart, lest greater danger do attend thy drift. Torment, sweet friend, that base and crooked age that durst dissuade me from thy Lucifer with greatest torments that our hell affords. His faith is great. I cannot touch his soul, but what I may afflict his body with, I will attempt, which is but little worth. One thing, good servant, let me crave of thee to glut the longing of my heart's desire, that I might have unto my paramour that heavenly Helen, which I saw of late whose sweet embracings may extinguish clean those thoughts that do dissuade me from my vow and keep mine oath I made to Lucifer. Faustus, this or what else thou shalt desire shall be performed in a twinkling of an eye. Was this the face that launched thousand ships and burnt the topless towers of Ilium. Sweet Helen, make me 
in mortal with a kiss. Her lips suck forth my soul. See where it flies. Come, Helen. Come, give me my soul again. Here will I dwell, for heaven is in these lips, and all is dross that is not Helena. I will be Paris, and for love of thee, instead of Troy, shall Wittenberg be sacked, and I will combat with weak Menelaus, and wear thy colors in my plumed crest. Yea, I will wound Achilles in the heel, and then return to Helen. For a kiss. Oh, thou art fairer than the evening air, clad in the beauty of a thousand stars. Brighter art thou than flaming Jupiter when he appeared to hapless Semele. More lovely than the monarch of the sky in wanton Arethusa's azured arms. And none but thou shall be my paramour. <sighs> Gentlemen, what ails, Faustus? Ah, my sweet chamber fellow, had I lived with thee, then had I lived still, now I die. Eternally. Look, comes he not, comes he not? What means, Faustus? Then like he is going to some sickness by being over solitary. If it be so, we'll have physicians to cure him. Tis but a surfeit, never fear, man. A surfeit of deadly sin that had damned both body and soul. Yet, Faustus, look up to heaven. Remember, God's mercies are infinite. But Faustus' offense can ne'er be pardoned. The serpent that tempted Eve may be saved, but not Faustus. <sighs> Gentlemen, hear me with patience and tremble not at my speeches. Though my heart pants and quivers to remember that I've been a student here these thirty years, oh, would I never seen Wittenberg, never read book? What wonders I've done, all Germany can witness, yea, all the world, for which Faustus hath lost both Germany and the world, yea. Heaven itself. Heaven. The seat of God. The throne of the blessed. The kingdom of joy. And must remain in hell. Forever. Hell. Ah. Hell. Sweet friend, what shall become of Faustus being in hell forever? Yet, Faustus, call on God. Hey, on God! Who Faustus hath abjured? On God. Faustus must feed. Oh, my God, I could weep, but the devil draws in my tears. Gush forth blood instead of tears, yea, life and soul. Ah. 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 He stays my tongue. I would lift up my hands, but see he holds them. They hold them. Who fosters? Lucifer, Mephistopheles. Uh, a gentleman. 
I gave them my soul for my cunning. God forbid. God forbid it indeed, but forced us to do it for vain pleasure of twenty-four years have forced us past eternal joy and felicity. I read them a bill with mine own blood. The date is expired. The time will come, and he will fetch me. Why did not Faustus tell us of this before? The divines might have prayed for thee. Oft have I thought to have done so, but the devil threatened to tear me in pieces if I named God to fetch both body and soul if I once gave ear to divinity. And now it is too late. Gentlemen, away, lest you perish with me. What shall we do to save both? Talk not of me, but save yourselves and depart. God will strengthen me. I will stay with Faustus. Tempt not God, sweet friend. But let us into the next room and there pray for me. Uh, pray for me, pray for me. And what noise soever he here come out unto me for, nothing can rescue me. Pray thou. And we will pray that God may have mercy upon you. Gentlemen, farewell. If I live till morning, I'll visit you. If not, Faustus is gone to hell. Posters. Farewell. Posters. Now has the white one the hour to live, and then thou must be damned perpetually. Stand still, you ever-moving spheres of heaven. The time may cease and midnight never come. Fain ages, I rise, rise again, and make a perpetual day. All let this hour be but a year, a month, a week, a natural day. That Faustus may repent and save his soul. Oh, Lente, Lente. Curite noctis equi. Stars move still. Time runs. A clock will strike. The devil will come, and Faustus must be damned. Oh, I leap up to my God. Who oh, pulls me down? See. See where Christ's blood streams in the firmament. One drop would save my soul. Half a drop. Ah, my Christ. I rend not my heart for naming of my Christ. Yet will I call on him, oh. Where we lose to her. Where is it now? It's gone. See where God stretcheth out his arm and bends his ireful brows. Mountains and hills come, come and fall on me and hide me from the heavy wrath of God. Then will I headlong run into the earth. Earth, gape! Oh, no. It will not harbor me. You stars that reign at my nativity, who 
whose influence hath allotted death and hell now drop forces like a foggy mist into the entrails of yon laboring cloud that when you vomit forth unto the air my limbs may issue from your smoky mouths so that my soul may but ascend to it on my soul yet for Christ's sake whose blood hath ransomed me impose some end to my incessant pain let forces live in hell a thousand years a hundred thousand and at last be saved oh no end is limited to damned soul why wert thou not a creature wanting soul or why is this immortal that thou hast. Ah, uh, Pythagoras, Metempsychosis, were that true, this soul should fly from me, and I be changed unto some brutish beast. All beasts are happy, for when they die, their souls are soon dissolved in elephants. But mine must live still. To be plagued in hell. Cursed be the parents that engendered me. No, Faustus. Curse thyself. Curse Lucifer. That hath deprived thee of the joys of heaven. It strikes. It strikes. Now, body, turn to air, or Lucifer will bear thee quick to hell. O soul, be changed into little water drops and fall into the ocean and there be found. My God, my God, look not so fierce on me. Adders and serpents, let me breathe a while. Ugly hell, gape not. Come not, Lucifer. I'll burn my books. Is the branch that might have grown full straight. And burned is Apollo's laurel bough that sometime grew within this learned man. Faustus is gone. Regard his hellish fall, whose fiendful fortune may exhort the wise only to wonder at unlawful things whose deepness doth entice such forward wits to practice more than heavenly power permits.